Who here has a collection of high resolution or high definition music? Has a, uh, a collection. Like, Do you have any tracks like at all? Very like, small. That's fine, that's good, yeah. because there's, there's not a lot out there. I have it on optical discs. <laughs> okay, that's fine, that's good. Brilliant. We can all teach you. Um, <laughs> now you can probably teach us actually as well. That's good, because some people are like, the last people are like, no, we don't have any of that. No, CD's good enough for us. So, mm -hmm. my, my challenge here, and this is a challenge we as an industry face, is to say, why 24-bit content is good, why it's better than CD, where you can get it from, how you can access it, and how you can play it back as well. Downloading is still stuck in most people's minds as poor quality, low resolution, and the reason for that was that a lot of it was copied music, it was, people weren't ripping in high quality because they needed to transfer it easily, and storage was expensive. My first computer I got had an 80 megabyte hard drive. I couldn't fit a lot of music on that now. This is a standard laptop, this has a 350 megabyte hard drive. For 100 euros or 80 euros, I can buy a one terabyte USB drive or, or NAS drive. So there's no reason for me to compress my content. I can download at incredibly high speed. I can download in CD quality in not much longer time than it takes to download a compressed file. I can store things in high quality without having to spend all of my money on storage. So things that people associate with downloading music don't need to apply anymore. And the thing we come on to next is you, you can actually have a better downloaded collection than your CDs. You can actually get much better quality. So just to confirm on physical music, this is physical music sales. So this is all of the music, anything you can pick up and carry away with you. Over the last five years, it's dropped. It's nearly halved. Compare that to digital music sales, so downloader sales, they've shot up. And 2005 was a real turning point because that's almost a date when you can say most developed nations rolled out widespread high-speed um, high broadband access. And as soon as you get high-speed broadband, immediately you start downloading as much as you can. Or oh, I did anyway. So, okay, what we listen to and where we get it from, when we still listen to music, just one question, which will come out later. Why do we listen to music? Because we like it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so remember that one. We'll come back to that. But no, that, that, that's it. We listen to music because we love it and it makes us happy. So we'll come back to that one later on at the end. So if we look at file quality, um, Ed Selly, who's a journalist for Hi-Fi Choice, and used to work for us at uh, Cambridge Audio, said he made a very good uh, point. He said that there's some wonderful high-resolution music out there. But the way that record companies approach high resolution music is completely back to front. Imagine if you went to buy a film and all the Hollywood blockbusters, all the great new films full of explosions and people being blown to pieces, you can tell my taste in films, um, were only available on DVD. And the Blu-ray section just had art house films, Korean dance movies, maybe a film with people just only using mind to communicate. If, if, if Blu-ray was only for art house films, and what 99% of the population wanted was only available on DVD. What on earth would be the point of that? But this is how the music industry goes about the release of music. Because there's fantastic content out there, but it's not being released fast enough. So CD, for years and years, this was the ultimate quality. This was brilliant. CD, we all remember going from cassette to CD. Suddenly cassette was shit. It was all about CD. Well, a CD only ever really exploded when recordable CD became available, because then you could copy everything. But if we look down at compressed music, old school iTunes file, current iTunes file, 128k, 256k, quite a big difference. On a really basic system, there's not a lot in it. And if someone's perpetually deaf and going out nightclubbing, they, they, are, they can't tell the difference. But most people, yeah, you play in 256k, you play in a CD, they can get the difference between them. But then suddenly you look at, this is a 24-bit, 96 kilohertz studio master file. And you go, that is a hell of a big difference above CD. I always thought CD was the best. Shit, there's a lot more there. And then this is a 24-bit, 192 kilohertz file. Wow, that's a hell of a lot of data. That's a lot of music and a lot of quality I'm not hearing. Why do we listen to music? Because we like it. Because we like it. So do you go and sit down and say, I think I'll listen to some acceptable quality music that will make me feel OK? Or do you say, I'm going to listen to the music I love because it will make me feel good? So the point here is, just because we use to CD doesn't mean it's the best. If we can get better quality music, let's do it. And it, it exists, it's out there. This is the important thing. Um, compressed content, 24-bit content, oh sorry, low quality compressed music is available everywhere. You can pay for it on iTunes or Amazon. 
you can not pay for it on the Pirate Bay and other BitTorrent sites. You can use peer-to-peer -peer client software. You can get it from everywhere. CD, good quality. You can get them <coughs> online. Buy them in shops. Pretty much everywhere. As soon as you get to 24 bit 90 kilohertz files and 24 192 files, suddenly there's not a lot of content available. It's not as if it's not recorded in that facility though, because Studio Master tapes are in 24 bit. They're actually much better quality than the original CD. Most things are mastered in 2496. And a lot of these guys who are recording stuff in little studios, it's all been recorded in 24 bit or 2496. But CD is just a medium everyone's used to, so everything is downsampled to fit on a CD. So most of the music that you know and love on CD is available in much better quality, or it was, it technically is available, but the record companies need to release it. There are some small bands. So in 2496, the native resolution, say Pro Tools or Sonar or you know uh, most home recording software and hardware. So it's small bands, that's what they're recording in. Then they create a 16-bit version to release. But there are some small bands that they're thinking, oh, I actually tell you what, we can we can put it out in 2496. Or artists that really care about sound quality. So like Nine Inch Nails are doing it directly. Um, Neil Young does it because he's always been really kind of concerned about the sound quality. And there are some people doing it. Radiohead. Radiohead, I think. Yeah, Radiohead, did, yeah. they did uh, King of Lings, didn't they, in, in 2496. But mm. those bands are quite, anything? you know, they're really into their sound quality. Nine Inch Nails released their last album, yeah. Slip, free download 2496. Mm -hmm. so they said, actually, it's available. For them, it, was, it wasn't so much our fans want this, it was we can make this available, our fans will want it when they hear how good it is. And that's the thing, if the artists push enough for it, it will happen. Um, a lot of the old Rolling Stones um, original masters were recorded in very high quality in the studio, and now they're just starting to become available. Where do you guys get your high definition music from? Well, uh, from mostly from the band's <laughs> website and from some small, uh, like HD tracks. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. HD tracks have they have access to all the original EMI Studio Master tapes, so that's a very good place to go. Mm. It gets expensive, but they've got some fantastic stuff there. Do you say friends and yeah, yeah. other people's hard drives? Other people. Mm. Yeah. But <laughs> well, I say it. Yeah. Yes, yes. 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 It's it's recent. Recent. <laughs> it's probably digital already, and it's probably 2496 actually on, the, on their hard drive. But if it's old stuff, it's on analog tape, and actually there's nothing wrong with taking that and HD converting it with a, a studio HD mm -hmm. converter and releasing it as a 24, one, nine, you know, 192 release. Because the old analog, you know, two inch master tapes are actually very, very high resolution. Yeah? Nothing wrong with that at all. So it's all available, it's just getting the record companies to be interested in it. And you'll hear this from us uh, you know, again and again, yeah. but that's, that's the thing we, we yeah. want to encourage.